have a Bosch Jetronic mixture control unit. This one is for our 82 DeLorean. I don't have any problems with this particular unit. It seems to be running great. Uh, good smooth idle. It's a little goofy on a warm up, but I believe I've got a different problem somewhere else. However, I still think it's a good idea to kind of go through this thing, reseal it, make sure it's up to up to the task. When you're taking the fuel distributor off, you got three <sighs> screws up top here. On the fuel distributor, we have the main fuel feed. Right here we have the frequency valve. Here we have the frequency valve return as well as the fuel return to the tank. We have a control for the warm-up regulator. This is the other um, feed that goes into the distributor from the fuel regulator. And let's see, this one I believe is the cold start. Go ahead and get these out of the way. This little fella right here, this is your primary fuel control. Some people call it a push-up valve. It is adjustable. Pop it off here. There are some pieces, so make sure you're ready for it. Um, let's see. These little shims right here, I believe these um, more or less is what will control the primary fuel flow. All right, so we got valves, seats, springs. All right, it's all there, that's a good sign. This is the control plunger in the center. I went ahead and marked it. I just think it's a good idea. Next thing we have to do is separate the body. This part here can be pretty rough if you've got an older unit, but it's not so bad if you know what to do. What I like to do is leave about two of these screws barely in there. Well, maybe a couple threads, but I'll take four of them out. This is where it gets tricky. Sometimes this simply will not come apart. Uh, I wouldn't recommend prying between it or anything. I suppose it would work, but I wouldn't do it. I like to take a hammer. Don't hit it hard, just, um, just enough to catch it. But there you go. And just like that, it separates. See, I'm going to probably push on the plunger. There we go. Awesome. This plate here, I'm kind of glad we're replacing it. I mean, it just looks awful. But, you know, that's what a decade or two will do to most anything, I guess. All right, right here. These are adjustable springs. These feed the orifices that send the fuel to the poppets. Thus, six of them, six cylinder, you get the idea. In here, there are washers. The idea is to, 
have the spring installed spring hive to be, I think it's about roughly five millimeters. I'll double check that in a moment, but um, yes, five millimeters from the base to the top of that fella right there. All right, next I'm gonna remove the plunger uh, right here. This is like the main fuel control uh, that differentiates the uh, fuel to the top and the lower part of the plate. That one there, there, got more pressure to the top, there, more pressure to the bottom. Okay, so get this out of the way. Looks pretty good to me. Okay, and this part here, you gotta watch out for this one. This one can be a real booger. Parts can go flying, O-rings, filters, you know, that sort of stuff. So get that out of there like that. Okay. And put the O-rings off to the side. We have a filter. Uh, looks like a little Teflon seal. It kind of holds it all together in the, there in the bottom. O-ring here. A ring there I took that one off uh, these can't get a real good look at them but inside each one of um, these chambers there are some really really small slots this is a uh, this is where a lot of problems can come from crud can get in there something bypasses uh, you know fuel just hanging out there for too long uh, all right let's see Already got that one pretty clean. If you can get away without taking the screen off, I'd advise that. These things are, I don't have a new one and it's kind of fragile. So I'll let that ride. Okay, get this out of the way. Go in there. Okay. And the top of the fuel distributor, you need to check a couple things. Get something that's uh, pretty straight, straight edge is preferred, right here. This face needs to be flush with the end of every one of these orifices. Can't be too high, can't be too low. If it's too high, you're going to have too much flow, if it's too low, I would say uh, it would be an interference problem, probably mess the plate up, cause dents. Um, just make sure they're flush. Like that right there. Perfect. Every one of those orifices checked out nice and flush. So let's go ahead and get these O-rings back to where they belong. These are new. Uh, one of the reasons why we're taking it apart, just a good idea. Looks good. And on this screen, if you do take the screen off to clean it, um, make sure, see right there, you can see the, the feed lines. Just make sure they're kind of lined up pretty good. Nice and in the center there. Make sure the retaining clips are on a plastic, nice and even. Pretty good, I'll adjust it a little later. Okay, this part isn't exactly my favorite part, but it must be done. You've got to take the O-rings and gotta stretch them around there. It's truly awful sometimes. Because they're supposed to look a little like this when they're set into there. These six O-rings that go around there are truly awful to install when you have new ones. Uh, they're round, those are ovals. Doesn't really work out real well. So what I did, what I did was I took one of my old O-rings and I kind of held it, or used it to hold them in place. Um, let's see if it works. There's a slot on the top. See the hole? The hole right here corresponds with that slot and the hole for down here for each one of the cylinders. So 
I am going to point this in the center of that. If it doesn't match up, it will restrict fuel flow. Car probably won't even start. All right. Make sure they're all starting nice and smooth. Okay, now I got to dig off the o-ring it does not belong. Boy, that was good. That felt great. The installed height on each one of these springs on this fuel distributor are roughly between Five point two to about five point three, all the way around. I'd say it's pretty close. Um, the true test is when we do a fuel flow test to make sure they're all within reason. All right, now we need to put this back together. Let's make sure this plate's in the correct position. Got the new and the old. Got the teeny teeny tiny hole right about there it's for the warm-up regulator check and compare that looks good to me All right we do have that little indention right there it's on the um, the housing and the gasket little hole lines up with Regulator, okay. All the O rings are in place. Right. Oh, you know what? I did forget one important O ring. Don't forget this fella right here. Just kind of gently pick it out of there. There we go. Make sure all the guts are kind of in the correct position. Give it a nice little snap. Excellent. good snug it up
make sure the plunger feels good. Perfect. This little plug, I got some new copper for it. This is a fuel test port. I'll probably check it later, but we're going to go ahead and just change it for now. Worry about it then. I'm under the assumption that it was really nice the way it was. Look, got a little o ring for that. Sure, it's in great shape. No nicks or anything. Let's find the corresponding o ring for that fella. Should be you right there. Find the match over here. All right, that'll do it. See, it looks pretty good. All right, this is my fuel pressure shim. Spring. There we go. Spring. Washer. Fantastic. Fuel distributor, O-ring, and seal replacement.